welcome to your first video lesson. I know it's always kind of funny to listen to these on the computer, but here's what we need to talk about. It's really related to our lab tomorrow. And so I want to mention to you something that is talked about in the book, but it's in like one of those little side notes, which yes, you should read. Uh, and the one I want to talk to you about is what's called the law of multiple proportions which as you might have noticed is what your lab is on. So I'm going to just kind of put the definition of this law of multiple proportions up here so we can take a look at what it means. The law of multiple proportions states that the masses of one element that combine with a fixed mass second element of the second element are in a ratio of small whole numbers. All right, here's what that means because this one this actually sounds really sounds easy and then when you have to really think about what it means. So I want us to consider a copper oxide for a moment. And as you know from our naming, there's actually two different kinds of copper oxide. There's copper one oxide and copper two oxide. So if I take a copper oxide and I try to decompose it, take this one, I can decompose it into its elements. This one could also decompose into its elements. Usually you do that by heating. I want to consider what this means in light of this law of multiple proportions. So I want us to consider two different copper oxides. We'll call them copper oxide A and copper oxide B. So here's copper oxide A and copper oxide B. So let's assume that for copper oxide A, we have a 10 gram sample and that's heated and so when it heats if you kind of look back at these original equations when it heats it's going to decompose so it's going to break down in both cases into copper and oxygen so the products are the same so when it's done heating we have 7.988 grams of copper that remains We're going to do the same thing with copper oxide B. So let's say we have a 10 gram sample of copper oxide B. Oh, sorry, I should have said heated. And this one is also going to decompose, and so we're going to be left with copper. And so in this case, we're left with 8.819 grams of copper remains. So this gives us some information because we can certainly figure out in both of these cases how much oxygen was given off. So in this case, it's 2.012 grams of oxygen, but in this case, it's 1.119 grams of oxygen. So we take a look at those numbers and they're, they're certainly not the same compound, but let's relate this to figure out how that works with this law of multiple proportions. Well, first we're gonna make a ratio and we're gonna make a ratio of grams of copper to grams of oxygen. So in this case, we have 7.988 grams of copper for 2.012 grams of oxygen, which gives us a number, if we kind of reduce it, 3.9770 grams of copper per one gram of oxygen. If we make the same kind of ratio for copper oxide B, we have 8.8819 grams of copper for 1.119 grams of oxygen. We reduce that a little bit, 7.937 grams of copper for every gram of oxygen. Well, let's go back to the definition. So this definition says the masses of one element that combine with a fixed mass of a second element are in a ratio of whole, small whole numbers. So for this example, we're talking about, for the, the masses of one element, we're talking about copper that combine in a f with a fixed mass of a second element, our second element here, we're gonna call oxygen. When we look at those ratios, notice I, I've simplified both of these so that it's per one gram of oxygen. So that's
That's our fixed mass of the second element. Go back to the definition. The masses that combine with that fixed mass are in a ratio of small whole numbers. So what that means is, here's the masses that combine with the fixed mass are in a ratio of small whole numbers. So if I take basically the ratio of the masses ooh, can't spell, of copper to one gram of oxygen, I'm going to take that 7.937 grams of copper. That's the from the copper oxide B. I'm just trying to put the bigger one on top. Divided by that mass from copper oxide A. And these are both from compared to one gram of oxygen. I get a small whole number. And while that doesn't seem like a really big deal, historically when they you know, didn't have microscopes and couldn't see atoms and things like this, this finally told them something about how elements formed compounds. So in that case, it became really important. Now let's talk about how this is going to kind of relate to the lab. So let's talk about the lab for a moment. So in the lab, you're going to be making a copper iodide. You're actually going to be taking a piece of copper. It's a, a rectangular piece of copper, and you're going to fold it in half lengthwise like a hot dog, so to speak. I'll try to draw that for you. So here's this kind of strip of copper that you've got. And you're going to take some iodine, and you're going to sprinkle it into this kind of folded up piece of copper. And then you're going to heat it. My Bunsen burner, in case you were wondering. Give it a little color. Right. So as you heat it, what's going to happen is that some of this iodide is going to react with the copper, and you're going to form on the surface of the copper. Whoa, totally lost some of my copper here. You're going to form a copper iodide. What's cool about this is that some of the iodine, there's too much of it, it's going to end up subliming because iodine sublimes. Hopefully you know what that means. Um, and so we'll see a nice purple vapor leaving that. But your job here, and what one of the things you're going to figure out, is your job is to figure out what copper iodide is it. And then, eventually, we're going to take a look at some other data and see how that applies to the law of multiple proportions. So that is what we're looking at for tomorrow. So come, don't forget your shoes, don't forget your lab notebook, and if you forgot your goggles before, make sure you bring them, and we will see you guys tomorrow.